Good snowy afternoon, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us. It is a cold one up in Bend, Oregon today, but we're happy you're with us. Today, we're going to take you on a tour of our 1938 Westcraft Master. This is the only two-window Westcraft ever known to be found and exist, and we just did a full ground-up restoration on it. So, let's go. Well, as I mentioned before, this is a 1938 Westcraft master model. Only one I've ever seen. This is the smallest that I've seen as well. A two-window trolley top. Now originally in 1938 this trailer would have been made of masonite and so when it came to us it was literally sawdust. It fell apart right here in the shop. We have had a painstaking year and a half to put this trailer back together. The archaeology and the rebuild on this has been extremely tedious and we skinned it all in aluminum with this beautiful paint job. Let's take a look. Well, as I mentioned, this is a very small trailer. Um, about 16, 17 feet total, two window Westcraft. Uh, very small unit. So we tried to keep this as period correct as possible. Um, we, uh, we wanted it to be 1938. So everything was meticulously taken apart, painstakingly cleaned, and um, if it needed to be fixed or modified, of course, we did that and then put back together, including the whole front hitch um, that, that came to us originally. We we've had to tear it down, rebuild it, put it back together, along with the front jack that originally came with it and the uh, horizontal propane tank. Um, we were able to kind of shine up the brass on here, which was cool, but it also just blends kind of in and doesn't stand out too much but a really nice touch for a 1938 uh, trailer. Very period correct, and that's exactly what we were going for. Uh, originally, this trailer would have had the same rock guards that we have here, um, but they were a different material. They would have been like from a Model A, Model T, kind of a ribbed, um, you know, thick rubber mat would have been on the front of this because this was a masonite trailer, so you would have had masonite wood with a thick rubber matting on here. We copied the exact same shape, but we made them out of this um, textured aluminum that's on here. So it's going to protect, as it's going down the road, any rocks that come up and protect that beautiful paint job that we have going on. So along with all this 1938 originality that we love so much and came out so well, this was the original water fill. It did have a tank in it, sat right underneath the dinette booth in here. So we were able to uh, reuse the original uh, 1938 water fill goes of course to a new tank inside which kind of brings me to the point of we do have to cover some safety features um, like this breakaway switch going down the road we want to make sure that the uh, new owner is 100% up to uh, standards and safe and so it does have a, a nice breakaway switch and electric brakes um, put on the, the vehicle for safety feature let's talk about these corners Oh man, I'll tell you, it was weeks and weeks of molding these corners. Now originally, this trailer did have steel hydro-pressed corners on all four corners of this trailer. Unfortunately, because they were steel and it sat out in the weather for quite a while, they were completely rusted through. And I mean like cheesecloth rusted through. So we went ahead and decided to lay all the corners up in fiberglass. That was extremely time consuming. The process that goes into this is just absolutely ridiculous. What we had to do was basically expandable foam all four corners and then cut it and shape it. And then after cutting and shaping it, then we had to lay it up with fiberglass cloth and then of course resin it and gel coat it and paint it. Very, very, very long and tedious process. It took forever. So these corners here that we have are actually a formed fiberglass corner instead of a hydro-pressed steel corner that would have been done back in the 30s and 40s. Very, very time consuming, but we got a perfect fit and it's nice and smooth. And because of the gel coat and the paint, like you would do on any fiberglass, we were able to get it extremely smooth and it's very, very durable at this point um, and looks the part of what an aluminum or a steel corner would be. Let's talk about the copper screen. Check this out. Look at the glow that that gives you. Now that is period correct for the 30s. 1938 trailer, 
they would have had copper screen just like this. It's a real thick material, super durable, and it just gives it that beautiful glow look. Just absolutely incredible. All these little things are what adds to the period correct 1930s feel of this two window Westcraft. One more thing I want to show you is the tail light and the license plate holder. This is just the coolest piece on the whole trailer. We did have parts of it, but a lot of it was broken. Very, very rusted through again, completely damaged. But check this out. This was the only tail light on the whole trailer. It has turn signals on each side. Of course, it says stop and then a running light in the center. And then this right here is your license plate uh, bracket. Look at how ornate and all the work that went into that in 1938. They didn't spare any expense. It was incredible. But what we had to do was reform all of this casing right here. We had to pound it out. We had to stretch it and form it. And then all of the lenses had to be recast in resin. So we laid them up in rubber forms and recast them all in resin. We have to give this the original look. It's got to be the original tail light for this one-of-a-kind two-window Westcraft. Well, this is a very special trailer to say the least, but you ain't seen nothing yet. Now we're going to let Anna take you for a tour of the inside. Come on in. I can't wait to show you around. Welcome to the interior of the 1938 Westcraft Master. We're so excited to share this with you guys. We built this trailer according to the original floor plan. We even used the same original species of wood. This is Maranti, and we finished it in a really nice uh, satin finish. It turned out beautifully. It's got that warm glow, and it really has the warm feeling of a 1930s trailer. Um, a couple of the details that you'll see as you tour this trailer, you'll see that we used uh, vintage uh, new old stock hardware that we found. Uh, not only do we have these cool poles in the drawers, we also have the signature Westcraft um, stainless poles here with the Bakelite accents. All of the drawers are on um, Easy Glide full extension drawer hardware, which is really, really handy. All the cabinetry that was here originally has been replicated and built to factory original specs. You also see we have all these cute little cubbies. So there's all kinds of neat um, storage for displaying all the vintage knickknacks and uh, decorative pieces along with anything that you might need for a really stylish camping trip. In this cabinet, you'll see that we have also hidden a new vintage style refrigerator. So when you have electrical hookups, you have this um, as a nice backup. It also includes a freezer. Uh, taking a look around here is a full size bed. And you can see what a beautiful cubby the bed area is it, you truly feel like you're cocooned and the wood absolutely glows in the evening we have vintage reproduction light fixtures these light fixtures are very very simple but believe it or not these are exactly what came out of this trailer below the bed one of the coolest features of this trailer is that we actually have a hidden air conditioning unit and it's been hidden under a facade that makes it appear like it is just a drawer that would be found originally in a Westcraft. And I'll show you how that slides open. You just lift it here, slide it up. You've got your intake and output vents. And then when you are all done using it, you just slide the drawer back down and voila, nothing to remind you that it's 2024. <laughs> also, this trailer um, comes equipped with a wardrobe, large wardrobe closet. We've added outlets in the closets so that if you wanted to mount a television in here, you could. Tons of storage. Also, a couple things I don't want to forget in the bedroom. We replicated the original shelf and also we replicated 
the original magazine rack that we found in this trailer when it first came to us. All of the trolley hardware was painstakingly reproduced um, as it was all missing or completely rusted through. So each window comes with about 15 different parts and pieces that had to be fabricated and then painted. And then you'll see the beautiful trim and the copper screening that was installed. And as we move into the kitchen area, you'll see that we went with a period correct marmoleum. This uh, was the closest countertop that we could find that um, matched what was here originally. We also kept the original cabinetry layout, so you've got a couple of small drawers for cutlery, for spices. We have this adorable little cutting board. And then all these neat little cabinets. Um, everything that they felt would be perfect for 1938 uh, camping, living on the road. So if you look under here, you'll see also um, one feature of this trailer. This is where we hide the systems, the remote for the Go Power um, system. We have a 2000 watt inverter system, uh, two six volt AGM batteries, um, and this whole system is solar ready. So even though we've stayed true to the vintage original look and feel, we have hidden some really cool and necessary updates um, that bring us into the modern world and make this something that really will function for uh, the owner. Uh, down here again, got a wheel well. <laughs> Not very much storage. <laughs> hidden behind this door is the original ice box. So we restored this to factory original. And should you take this trailer out dry camping, this will function just as good as it did in 1938, which is actually surprisingly pretty good. So this is the original 1938 range that came with this trailer. And um, it's in amazing condition, really. You'll see there's a few little original nicks and dings, but I think that overall it contributes to the aesthetic of the trailer. We didn't want this to look so new that it lost its authenticity. If you look up above, this is um, the vent hood, which was completely rebuilt and restored. And then up above, again, we have a ton of storage. Now, when I say a ton, keep in mind, this is a tiny trailer, but the original designers of this trailer did not skimp at all when it came to storage. They utilized every single nook and cranny in this trailer. And so it's pretty amazing that you can have a trailer at this length that can be this detailed um, and actually have this amount of storage while being incredibly stylish. Up front, again, you've got overhead storage. And then look at this beautiful table. This table um, was designed after the original table, this original table leg, even some of the parts and pieces on here were on the original table itself. Um, but it's absolutely gorgeous. We made this out of hard wood. You'll see the, the detailing in the woodwork and the beautiful grain. I love this species of wood. While we're in the um, front dinette area, you'll see this beautiful upholstery job. This is a super comfortable chenille mix fabric. Um, it's got a great vintage look to it, but it also has that high grade um, commercial usability. Um, and so it just gives you a very luxurious camping experience. Uh, down below, you'll see that we've added some outlets to the bottom. So of course, for today's campers, they're going to want to be able to not only cook and eat and play games, but if they need to charge their phones and all um, different equipment like computers, they have access to that. 
And then under the dinette, you will see we also have integrated as much storage as possible. See beautiful detailing here, hardwood detailing and trim you'll see all throughout this trailer. And since we're down here, who can miss the beautiful reproduction uh, marmoleum? It is a pattern that would have been common in the 30s with this marbleized uh, pattern that incorporates all the different textures and colors that um, kind of are so reminiscent of 1930s. So, Overall, I think that the design came out really, really beautiful, and who wouldn't want to stay in this beautiful trailer and get a true experience of what 1938 was really like? Well, that was super fun, guys. Thank you so much for joining us on the tour of this two-window 1938 Westcraft Master. We really hope you enjoyed it. Now, Flight Camp's got a lot cooking here at the shop, so stay tuned for the next episode. That looks miserable. It looks really cold. I don't know. I say we hunker down in here tonight. I think you might be right. Got a really nice trailer. <laughs>